Let there be light. The majestic supremos of cake, Chucky Wocky Doodah, march on. They've roared out of Brighton to rule London and stage a mammoth celebration fit for the Queen's Diamond Jubilee. Sorry. And we have asked a galaxy of stars to set the Chucky team a series of epic cake challenges that will stretch them like never before. This time we've invited the Peter Pan of Pop and Knight of the Realm, Sir Cliff Richard, to set Chucky a heavenly challenge. I'm anticipating being bolder. The masters of chocolate will be pushed to their celestial limits. Yeah. And ultimately it will take divine intervention to avoid disaster. Absolutely don't think it can be fixed. Elizabeth II's Diamond Jubilee, a summer of celebration for an historic 60 years on the throne. And Her Majesty of Chocolate, Christine, has grand plans for Chucky's newly opened London store to put on the mother of all street parties. So she commands shop manager Ben to stage a royal knees up. The Queen of England is celebrating her Diamond Jubilee. We need to celebrate with her. What do you want to do? I want you, maybe with David, mm -hmm. to organise the New Bird Quarter Jubilee Street Party. Right. What this party has to do is really introduce us to London. Okay, so a right royal welcome. A right royal welcome is brilliant. Yeah. With less than a week to go to the Jubilee celebrations, Christine has astronomical expectations of her loyal subjects. We've got a huge amount to pull off, but the Queen of Chocolates has spoken, and then we'll obey. At the studio in Brighton, Christine's cake courtiers Dave and Tom are tasked with conjuring two Jubilee-themed creations. One for the seaside shop window display, and one for the Royal Shindig in London. And the regal work draws comparisons between Queen Elizabeth II and Queen Christine. They both suffer from delusions of grandeur. They do, but they one of them they rule, but no one else actually listens to them. <laughs> they have no power at all. For his royal effort, Dave has decided to sculpt two of the Queen's favourite canines. Obviously the Queen loves corgis. They're Welsh, and I'm Welsh. We have a doggy day for them. It's a doggy day! As Dave moulds the monarch's corgis, Tom has to make a mutt of his own. Christine has asked him for a classic British bulldog, but crafting animals is not his strong point. Oh, that sort of shape. Yeah, I think you can exaggerate. You can make the jowls really big and hangy. Good, thanks Dave. So, an extra blob down here. Following the wise words of his mentor, Tom shapes his bulldog. Oh, yes. It's great. <laughs> it's really good. London and Her Highness Christine has summoned French fancy Davy to help shop manager Ben organize Chucky's Jubilee extravaganza. Well, I think if you are going to celebrate the Queen, then we should have a Queen. But Christine and David have made a fatal error, plotting their expensive plans within earshot of financial controller Christine. The cakes are organised. Did I hear cake, sir, as opposed to cake up? The fact that we're giving away a few slices of cake, hundreds. So, going back to what I want, I want a queen, a famous queen. I want a throne. A throne. I want a crown. Anything else? Parachute? That would be lovely. The area? It would be great if the red arrows. That's enough. I can't bear to anymore. 
all that will happen is I'll go behind and I will crop every single thing out on the bees list that doesn't come in the budget. I will poke your eyes out with a big stick if I don't get my own way. This is to celebrate the Queen. She's worked really, really hard. This is not the time to stink. No spending above the budget. No spending. Bunting. Bunting. What did you just say? Read. Bunting. So, with the keeper of the toffers keeping tight control, David and Ben face a hard task to provide entertainment and a celebrity queen on budget for the Jubilee party. <laughs> Brighton. Tom and Dave have a lot to do to complete their royal masterpieces by the end of the day. So Tom has commandeered rookie chocolatier Mike to make bunting for his British bulldog cake. When Mike's painted all his union jacks and I'll join them all up and come down the cake like that. I think that'll look good. They look really British then with a the bulldog at the top. For his cake, Dave paints a giant diamond, brushes his royal corgis to life completes a sash and adds roses, strawberries and glitters. I finished! Um, I hope everyone loves it in London town. I think the Queen will like it. And snapping at Dave's heels is Tom. Now I've finished. <laughs> <laughs> They've done themselves and their country proud. 25 kilos of chocolate, seven tiers of cake, their majestic jubilee creations are complete. Away from Blighty, Christine's not going on a summer holiday, but is off to meet someone who's been going almost as long as the Queen, one of Britain's best-selling recording artists, Sir Cliff Richard. I've come a really long way to Portugal to pick up the challenge from Sir Cliff Richard. I feel a bit overwhelmed, I suppose. We have invited Sir Cliff Richard to set the next epic Chucky Challenge, an elaborate cake for a ball in aid of cancer charities, including one commemorating TV personality Gloria Hunniford's daughter, Karen Keating, who died of the illness aged 41. Why have you invited me all the way out here to Portugal? I suddenly became very aware that there's nobody I know that hasn't been touched by cancer in some way. They've either been diagnosed with it or have lost people they love to it. You can make me some elegant, wonderful cake that speaks about the problems, maybe. Okay. Is there anything that I should draw upon to make this cake as wonderful as it could be? Yeah, I think, you know, Karen, she always had the feeling that we all of us had guardian angels. And uh, so therefore she was always into angels and feathers. Every time I see a feather now, I find I find it in my bar. How can a feather get in my bathroom? Anyway, I think of Karen. So um, I'm beginning to believe fast that angels are here looking after us. And so that's why the cake. I thought if, if the theme could be an angel. I think that's a really beautiful thing. If we can make this cake feel in some way ethereal, so that we can imbue the cake with hope, then I think that we've got that brief right. Is there um, a theme to the party? They're going to go for a, an Aurora Borealis okay. theme, which would be a great background for an angel. And the you know, angels are always glorious things with sleeping wings and stuff. Yeah. But you know what? I think it ought to wear two odd socks. Karen Keating was a fashionista. And she wore all this kind of weird, odd stuff, which always brought a smile to your face. So if you didn't think it spoiled it, that might be quite a cute idea. It could certainly represent Karen. I love that for no other reason than I always wear odd socks. <laughs> I love that. An angel with two odd socks. <laughs> this is right up our alley. I can't actually wait. <laughs> So the Chucky team had to create a heavenly giant angel with odd socks set against the background of the magical northern lights. Christine knows it's a gargantuan task. You could never write it, could you? The challenging part of this cake is going to be creating something that genuinely appears to be ethereal. 
chocolate is a very solid medium. Not just got to appeal to 500 people that will eat her. It's got to appeal to the mother of Karen Keating, Gloria Honeyford. I couldn't bear it if she didn't like it. With less than a week to perform their magic, the chocolatiers will have their work cut out. Coming up, Ben and David hit royal size problems in the new London shop. Are you kidding me? No, I don't. How many people fall in your shop? Has the Michelangelo of chocolate bitten off more than he can chew? It would be astonishing if you managed to pull that off. And a huge risk is taken with Sir Cliff's challenge cake. Now I'm going to pass it over to Mike. He's so inexperienced, it fills me full of fear.